with, with music and specifically originally the Velvet Underground rock group we became involved in it in, in, in the very end of 1965 and worked with came about largely out of his perception that the, the, the Rolling Stones, with whom he had a social relationship and had seen every time he came to New York. So he'd seen them um, and, he, and when he went to London. So he met them two or three times um, and recognized how much money they were making, you know, and how quickly they were making it. Thought to himself, well, God, I mean, I, I should, that, that doesn't look too hard, you know. I know people who can do that. And, um, so he asked people around, he said, look, let's find a group. So it was her who brought the Velvet Underground to, to meet, to, you know, to Cinematheque, with uh, the brilliant practice there, you know, play two films and before taking them to Andy. And uh, she said, you know, she said there was this group that was playing down at this coffee house in Greenwich Village called the Velvet Underground. She wanted me to see them, you know the Café Bazaar, that's how lame it was. Can you imagine playing in the Café Bazaar? The only thing bizarre about it was that it existed. So a couple of nights later, Barbara and I brought Andy down and Andy invited them to come up to the factory to use, use the space for you know, rehearsals, you know, to rehearse their music. So by the end of April, 66, after four months of work, they had essentially done the creative work that went into that package that looked like it would make a lot of money as they went on tour and also looked like they were going to put out a record which was going to be revolutionary and probably make a lot of money too, like the Rolling Stones. She was self-sufficient. She was her own person. She knew what she wanted. She knew the extent of her talent. She knew the limitations of her talent. Uh, and she wasn't going to be swayed by those people. Who was in the shadow? In the shadow? Standing in the shadow. Why? Right. He was always behind the camera. <laughs> Nico was so gorgeous that, you know, people would just drop dead. Just, she was just incredibly gorgeous. People just, they just... You knew nothing about the music business. But I think that he, you know, he, he, he had this fantastic eye. And, and, a, and a very strong sense of the, what's the culture, and he, he liked rock and roll. Then when the Velvet Underground sort of regained that fame in the 80s and made this long comeback and stuff, his, his fame grew and grew and grew in that world, right? And uh, people like David Bowie started talking about him a lot. And, and it, you know, now it's like, I mean, it seems like millions of rock groups are influenced by Andy Warhol, you know?